Hello, Lynn's online. Hi, Francisco here. We're um, just waiting for a few uh, other people to arrive and we'll get started in a few minutes. Thanks, Francisco. I'm um, again struggling with the web, so uh, just continue on and hopefully you'll see my little name pop up soon. Okay, great. Hey, Francisco. Hi, Ben. How are you? Good. Yourself? A little frazzled. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I got a uh, maintenance project on a, one of our buildings. And oh. Before I had things torn apart, and the forecast said no rain, no rain, no rain. So, of course, <laughs> I look a half hour ago and said, oh, no, rain tonight. It's like, oh. mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had a vacuum up on the staging and everything's opened up. So here I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I was um, um, here in Hartford at my house and working on the back porches a little bit this afternoon and saw that there was some rain in the forecast and I had a bunch of boards out on sawhorses I was painting. So I, <laughs> I, I, I was questioning whether I should just tempt fate and go ahead and get it all painted and, and hoping hoping it would just be a light shower it might pass and eventually i decided just to move everything into the garage into a little crowded space and work yeah. in there instead do, <laughs> and i'm glad i did because it because <laughs> okay. it actually came pretty heavy <laughs> yeah doing the maintenance dance in the spring is not easy yeah yeah um three let's see three our commissioners will not be here chuck ryan and gary have all bailed out for health or family reasons. Okay. So that's too bad. But we are expecting- And our... I just wanted you to know, this is Lynn. I'm, I am on the phone listening. Oh, great. Okay. Hey, Lynn. Yep. And hopefully we'll have uh, Clifton. We, we do, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Yeah, I'm here. Great, Clifton. Hello, everyone. Glad you could join us. Well, um, that's seven o'clock. Let's get rolling. It is seven o'clock. Crack the whip. Okay. All right. There are a couple, couple other people just rolled in, so I'll, I'll be slightly distracted as I have to click to admit people into the meeting. Um, ah, gotcha. But with that being said, uh, now, probably, Ben, might be a very good time for Clifton to introduce himself, and, and we, we might do the same to his benefit. Right. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, I'm Clifton Eiler. I'm the new town planner for Stonington. Started uh, Monday, so bear with me as everything is brand new to me. So this is actually my one of my first meetings, too. So um, thank you, guys. Um, but I'm just going to sit in the background and just listen and <laughs> see what's going on here first. Okay. All right. And and for everyone's benefit, for Clifton's benefit, we should probably all do a very brief introduction. Clifton Francisco Gomes, FHI Studio. We've been working with the town now close to a year on, on the zoning regulation rewrite. And you know, we'll afford you an opportunity to get a little familiar, more familiar with where we're at and what the process looks like as we get through the presentation. Uh, that said, I'll turn it over to Ben. Yeah, uh, Clifton, we met in our interview process. Uh, ben Philbrick, Chair of the Planning and Zoning, and I'll meet up with you tomorrow morning, I think it is. So we'll, uh, this has been very helpful, this whole process, and Francisco has been an amazing leader on dragging us commissioners, kicking and screaming through the mud of details of our, our archaic zoning regulations. So. He's been a savior, in my opinion. Fred, would you mm -hmm. like to go next? Are you here? Yeah, yeah. Fred Dykeman. I'm vice chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and uh, welcome, welcome aboard, Clifton. Okay, and I'm going to go down my list and call out people. Uh, ben, uh, we we got done with Ben Philbrick, but Ben yep. Tamsky is a citizen. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Ben Tamsky is here. Thank you. 
OK, and can you introduce your yourself and your capacity or interest very briefly, Ben? Um, yeah, thank you. My uh, capacity is former member of the commission and former chair. And um, now I guess just interested in the workings and certainly taking interest in the in the rewrite of the regulations, which we've been using for uh, as long as I can remember. So, looking <laughs> okay. forward to positive changes. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Carlene. And Carlene, if you could unmute yourself, I think you're unmuted. Go ahead and very briefly um, introduce yourself. No, maybe she she can only uh, listen. Uh, some people don't have an audio connection. Clifton, uh, Clifton, you just introduced yourself. Don. Good evening, I'm Don Fiore, and I'm on the Economic Development Commission for the town of Sturgeon. So one of my assignments on the Economic Development Commission is to mm -hmm. check out the status of the new zoning regulation uh, rewrite. And that's why I'm monitoring the hearings. So first time I've ever spoken since. Uh, and welcome, Clifton. Um, glad you joined the town of Sturgeon. We, uh, we uh, welcome you. So. OK, Rick. Uh, Rick Newton, I chair the Climate Change Task Force for the town. Okay. Th thank you, Rick. Um, and who, who else? Who, who hasn't introduced themselves? Lynn? Lynn, of course, yes. Hello, this is name, Lynn Conway. Um, no problem. Hello, this is Lynn Conway. I'm a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Welcome. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. And, and anyone else on that cares to introduce himself? No? OK. Well, good. Um, we have a, a fairly brief agenda for you this evening. I, I always hesitate saying it, it might also be a brief meeting because uh, sometimes we end up uh, with very long discussions, uh, even with a brief agenda. So let's yeah. let's jump into it. Um, and I just want to confirm everyone can see my screen. Is that correct? Yes. Good. Very good. OK, uh, so our agenda is to uh, have. What what likely will be a brief discussion on the status of the draft plan. Um, well, which it's been circulated to all of you. And, and so Ben and I have been working with staff uh, behind the scenes to distribute that. And we'll talk about where, where we're at in that process. Um, I would also like to talk about a, a public hearing for phase one and the process involved with that and, and taking a look at the calendar to see when that could potentially unfold. Um, and then we, we want to introduce you to phase two and, and uh, start thinking about phase two because phase two involves um, um, much more community engagement and um, so we want to be very intentional about scheduling uh, that engagement and the type of outreach we do and where we do it and et cetera. So we want to start thinking about that now. Um, the fall is a very good time to launch campaigns, and that puts us in very good position to start that work in the fall. Um, is there a comment or question anyone has? We need to do the same with the trailer. Or something. OK, I, I think we're good. And if if you are not uh, muted, please everyone mute yourself if you happen to be having a background conversation. You're not currently muted. Uh, and then we'll we'll talk we'll uh, talk about our next steps. Well, mo most of this discussion is really about our next steps. So where we are at in the process, and uh, Clifton, this would I think be most helpful for you. Uh, this is a as a reminder, everyone, it's a two phase process. The the first phase is really it's been focused on reorganizing the regulations, correcting any errors, omissions, bringing them uh, up to statutory compliance, um, and and really laying a solid foundation for much more substantive work in phase two. And we are nearing the end of phase one. And the particular task we're working towards right now is moving this set of regulations, these draft regulations towards adoption, and there are a few steps involved that require that. 
once once we do that, we're going to do some very basic training around the, the new regs with staff and um, and commissioners as well, how, how they're organized, et cetera. Uh, and then we can move forward to phase two. I'll talk about that uh, a little uh, a few slides in. Um, the draft regulations have been circulated to you all, and I wonder, does anyone have any questions or comments based upon the most recent draft? And I'll turn it over to all of you to, to speak up now. And I'm happy to bring up the document itself if we need to go to a particular section or page. No, I'm, I'm satisfied with it as it stands. I, I am as well as Fred. OK, we did um, as part of the most recent review, we did uh, update all of the cross references in the document of which there were many. It was a decent amount of work. Um, so they all those references to different sections are all up to date and they are dynamic, which means if we make changes in the document, they all automatically update. Um, and they also, as we when we export them to a PDF, they are hyperlinked, so you can click on a reference, it'll bring you to that section or page. But, so those should all be uh, working fine. Um, and in addition to that, we added a couple of graphics uh, to the regulations that we had discussed at prior meetings and had made some minor revisions, everything uh, of, of which we discussed at our meeting last month. Excuse me, Francisco, for a minute. Are we recording? Did you happen to push? Record? We are. We are. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And so all these meetings I have set uh, automatic recording and I did provide uh, Susan Collin had asked for those links and I did send her the links. Um, Gail had had them in the past as well. So we, we are definitely documenting all these meetings. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for asking and remembering. All right. Um, good. So in, in terms of, as I mentioned, Ben and I have been working to distribute this draft. It's really important that we get uh, multiple eyes on it. Um, uh, so we worked with uh, Candy Palmer, uh, your CEO, to distribute to the Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, any questions or comment they might have. And this is very recent. Uh, this was last week, end of last week. Uh, Susan Colon, uh, assisted us by distributing to Architectural Design Review Board. In addition to that, I reached out to Connecticut DEEP, being, being at your coastal community, uh, DEEP um, uh, needs to review all, all zoning regs that affect coastal zone areas. And while we haven't done any substantial work um, in terms of amending your zoning regs as applicable to the coastal zone, uh, they do want to review them, and I what I expect is what what we've shared the regs for right now is what's called just a preliminary review. Um, and so I I'm I don't know to, what to expect in terms of comment. It it may be that they point to some deficiencies and needs that we plan on addressing in phase two. And so I fully expect that I, I've communicated to them that we are uh, going through a multi-phase process and that we are going to come back around to coastal zone issues in phase two. Uh, so I, I look forward to hearing with them and, and once again that uh, the regs were distributed to them at the end of last week. In addition to DEEP, um, we are required to distribute to uh, your COG, SC COG, for their review. And their primary concern is any zoning uh, regulation amendments that might uh, impact neighboring communities, um, of which you know we we really don't have any. Um, but I I will prepare um, a kind of a summary of of changes that you know uh, neighboring communities may want to be informed of, of which we, we really don't have much. Um, based upon my communication with SC COG, they, they're really only interested in seeing the draft regulations once we have a public hearing scheduled. And because they want to see, they, they only want to see the draft that we're bringing a public hearing. They don't, they're not interested in a preliminary review like uh, Connecticut DEEP is conducting. So once we commit to a public hearing date, 
uh, and we we file a draft with the town clerk. Um, they're interested in seeing it at that time, and they can provide us comment uh, prior to the public hearing or at the public hearing. They could pr uh, provide a record for uh, reading into the, the minutes of the public hearing. As I mentioned in in this this phase of the work, I, I don't expect that they're going to say anything concerning to them. Um, but we there, this is a process that, that we need to go through. OK, any any questions on that review process? And just to, I have not heard back from anybody from ZBA from Candy yet. I think I'm not sure Susan's actually distributed it yet, but we'll, okay. we'll find out tomorrow. Good. And, and we obviously want to give people a chance to absorb it and review it. You know, it can be a daunting task to to lean into that. Um, so we I don't, I don't think we want to rush that, but it would probably benefit us to check in periodically and. So a couple of reminders might be helpful. All right, any any other questions on this review process? OK. All right, so um, as we think about our next steps towards adoption, we. You know, we have we obviously haven't scheduled a public hearing. Um, we have a mandatory. 30 day uh, filing period with SC COG for their review um, and and communications with surrounding towns. Uh, so we, we can't hold a public hearing until 30 days after we submit that. And of course, we I think we want to hear back from uh, ADRB and ZBA and potentially even deep before we we feel we have kind of a finalized draft uh, to submit to SC COG. So as we look ahead, uh, that that rules out June as a potential public hearing date that would obviously very, be very hurried. Um, if it's possible for us to get comments back from ZBA, ADRB by mid-June, third week of June, it, it would be, if there are really any uh, substantial comments, that would enable us at our next meeting, which is at the end of June, to discuss those and agree upon how to proceed. Uh, in which case, we, my, my office can turn uh, any revisions needed around pretty quickly and then, uh, and then share that uh, or send that over to SC COG. Um, and it, it really should be the town and the town uh, planner's office sending that over. Uh, so we, I will coordinate with, with Clifton staff there to, and, and Ben to make that happen. Uh, so that puts us into the potential of some point in July. Um, I, you know, I want to be sensitive to the fact that, uh, you know, in July and August, people are not around; they're on vacation, and it's hard to get people's attention. So, I, I'm going to defer to um, judgment all you as to when a most appropriate time might be for a public hearing. We do want to conduct a public presentation separate from the public hearing at, at least a week or two in advance of the public hearing. We're scoped to do this, and the reason why we do it is it it's kind of a relief valve on the public hearing. It, it's a no pressure, low pressure setting where we can present uh, all the changes that were made, why they were made, the purpose, the process, open that up to the public receive any comments, uh, address any concerns um, with without having a vote be on the table that evening, right? That way, if if there's anything we need to do with respect to revising the draft regulations or if there is anyone we should be communicating with in advance of a public hearing, uh, we have time to do that. And and then we could bring it to a public hearing, and and hopefully with the, with a, a little less uh, pressure on us to do a lot in in that meeting. Uh, so that that's the rationale, and and like I said, we want to do that a week or or two two weeks even in advance of, of a public hearing for adoption. Okay. The only we don't there's only one um, planning zoning meeting in July, and that's the 18th. Um, there is no. Fourth of July meeting. 
Right. So, um, and as you said, June is too early and it's totally booked anyway. So you want to try to do it in July, the workshop, and maybe the adoption in early August? I think it it would it would benefit us to identify a date to yeah. work to have something to work towards. Okay. And it we probably don't want to be too ambitious. The the 18th might be a little aggressive if our next okay. regular meeting of of our our commissioner committee is scheduled for the 28th. That would be the fourth Wednesday. If of, of June, here in June, uh, of June, of June. Yeah. What what I, I think would benefit all of us is to one more time come together, discuss any comments received from. ZBA, ADRB uh, um, and deep anyone else. And come to agreement as to what needs to be done, if anything. And then submit to SC COG. And then that starts our 30 days right there. I see. Okay. So, so the the soonest that would happen would be that last week uh, of June. Okay. In in which case, uh 30 days out doesn't, you know, puts us into maybe first week of August. Very, very well, first week of August, yeah. The starting week July 31st headed right. into first week of August. I'm not sure when your meeting is. And and it's also, I mean, we might also consider a special meeting. Right. No, I, I think we should have it separate from our regular yeah. meetings, right. um, which are the 1st and the 15th. And I'll probably be out of town the last two weeks of August. But I haven't bought tickets yet. So the workshop would be nice. Is is that what we're calling it? A workshop? What what's the right? So we'll we'll hold a a, a public presentation. Presentation. Okay. And and that I mean I I think we could be somewhat more flexible on the date of that as long as we don't we're not conflicting with uh, any other su substantial board or commission meetings. Um, I, don't, I don't know those schedules off the top of my. All head. right. So we we need to start searching around for something. In, in late July and that we could do, I, I think any time in the second half of July, because there's uh, there's no mandatory 30 day prior to a public presentation. Remember, it, it's it's not the public hearing for oh, okay. adoption. It's just a presentation. So we have a lot more flexibility with that. And I think second half of July might work well for that presentation. Do you want to um, do it on our the 26th, the regular when we usually meet? Yeah, yeah, that uh, and, that could work. So this is now. Lynn. Lynn, uh, yes, this is go Lynn. ahead. Can, can you hear me? So yes. I, you know, I, I have concerns um, having yeah. public meetings and potential votes in the July August time yeah. frame. You know, I think it would be one thing if we had two public meetings. You know, you could have one in July, one in August to hit people that are off um, out of town. Um, and then vote in September. I definitely mm -hmm. don't think we should do any kind of a vote until uh, the September time frame. But I think if since we're we're dead in the middle of the summer, if we think we're only going to have one public meeting, I would suggest that we postpone that and not have it in the summer. And if we think we need to have have it to keep our timeline to have a vote in September that we offer two public meetings. Um, again, you know, this is important. And uh, yeah, a lot of people travel in July and August and it's, it's too bad that we fall this way in our calendar, but you know, so be it better, better to postpone a month than, you know, um, have any issues later on. Bye. Very much understand that concern. Could you do two presentations, Francisco? Are you geared up for that? Yeah, I, if that's what we need to do, I, I wonder, you know, maybe we do one virtually and one in person. Well, that's an idea. You know, the other thing we could do is, um, and actually I think this, this is probably something that should be done one way or the other, is is there going to be any kind of a publication out to the public, uh, you know, other than announcement 
public meeting uh, to discuss uh, changes proposed for planning and zoning. Is there any going to is there going to be a small article that someone um, is going to write and put in the paper or something? Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I think that's totally yeah. appropriate. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So typically for the public meeting, we'll do some promotion surrounding that, and that would include uh, issuing a press release um, in support of the public meeting and describing the process, the project, the process, the purpose, et cetera. Uh, so I would hope that we would get a little bit of local press attention with that. Uh, and that's information that would be distributed, you know, two, three weeks out from uh, a public presentation. Good. At least two weeks, usually. Well, maybe we could do a virtual uh, presentation in late July. And then another one. Mid August and then the vote. In September. Fred, do you have any thoughts? Um, no, I think that that could work. Okay. And then this will bump right up into phase two, or is that a separate conversation, Francisco? <laughs> yeah, we, it it would, it would. I I think we we as soon as we get this adopted, uh, phase one, we we start right away in phase two, and with all the communications, I think the communications leading up, the public meeting and the communications leading up to this phase one public hearing for adoption is is really the beginning in some ways of the communications for phase mm -hmm. two and right. the, the community engagement because we'll have their attention. They'll be very interested. They'll want to potentially be more involved than they would have been in phase one. And it's an opportunity to reassure everyone that we've got a whole phase two that's intended to solicit input from the public and get people's opinions and weigh into the real, real issues that may concern them. So there's a lot of communications and messaging around that, but I, I think it's, I think it really, think it needs to be seamless. So even if we didn't have uh, uh, an adoption vote until the first week of September, maybe, we get started right away with phase two and we, we turn around the next week and we're right back at it. And maybe we go into a series of, uh, we we launched an online survey and and other communications and a much bigger presence on on the town website, et cetera. I I think okay. that's the perfect plan actually because it you know it builds on the momentum mm -hmm. and we can share our communication plan for phase two in that public meeting. I I think that's a good way to you know okay. public meeting on phase one. Yeah. And then, you know, in anything that's posted on the ad adoption of the phase one changes, you know, again, it can summarize the next step for phase two right away. Okay. Good, good. All right. And thank, thank you, Lynn, for speaking up on, on this issue. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so can we agree that our our July our regular meeting date for July uh, the twenty sixth um, would be appropriate for a virtual public presentation? I would think so. Why okay. Not? Anybody else? Lynn or Fred? Oh, that yeah, that, that makes that makes sense. To the virtual okay. one, then. Yeah. Good. Fine. If we're if, if we're ready, we should do it. Yeah. Yeah. I th I think that's a very good schedule. I, I like that. And then pick a date for the presentation in August. Yeah. And I, later in August is probably better. Uh, I think people start vacations start tapering off. I would imagine by the last week of August, people are coming back for school. Um, so I, I'll, you know, I'll defer to you. I'm not sure we need to pick that now. We we could probably wait until our meeting next month to pin that down, un unless uh, you folks 
feel strongly about a particular week or date, in, in which case I'm, I'm happy to pin that down as well. Well, Francisco, I, I would think that before we publish the date for the July virtual meeting, we would, as part of the communication plan, kind of whoever's writing an article or some kind of a summary of what's happening and next steps, you would want both dates. Yes put out at that time, you know, if, Absolutely. you know, in a very nice way, you know, we know it's the summer, so one's going to be virtual, one's going to be, you know, uh, in person and have those dates. So uh, I, I think it's important to understand when that communication will come out, and then we can, can say, do we need to figure out the August date at this point? I agree. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, does anyone have any strong feelings about when in August might be most appropriate, a particular week or day of the week? Well, as I said, I'll be I'll likely be gone. I'm not sure when the 20 somewhere in that week of the 21st for two weeks. OK, <coughs> you guys can right. carry on without me. That's fine. <laughs> but I should be there. I'll be gone from the 23rd of August till uh, September 8th. And you're gone okay. too. Okay. Um, week of the 14th? Yep. We do the, do the 16th, perhaps. 16th? We have a regular meeting on the 15th, public. It's true. Meeting. Well, move it up then to the 9th. Or the 17th. Or the 17th. Thursday, the 17th. But how so you've got July. So so here's the thing. You're working on on um. What was the July date? Twenty six. The twenty six, which is the last what in the month? Um, Wednesday. 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 Mm -hmm. So what you want to do then is you want to you want to hit, um, you know, two two weeks later, but not on a Wednesday. Just in case Wednesdays are problematic for some exactly. people, and that's why they can't join. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Well, that would argue for the tenth or the seventeenth, or yeah. you know, eighth or seventeenth, maybe. What? Plan what do we think? That's three weeks out, but that I think that's okay to give people time to digest and comment. Yeah. With their comments. OK, let's let's hold that. Let's let's move forward with those dates. The tw 26 for the virtual. Correct. And you prefer the 17th to the 10th, Francisco? Is that your thinking or? Lynn has a point of keeping up momentum of doing it within two weeks, but. Yeah, that being said, the 17th puts us just a little closer to the public hearing, which That's might be beneficial that we're not way, way detached from the That's public hearing. That's what I was leaning towards is three weeks is in that time of year, time of summer goes quickly and does yeah. take time. Because I'm assuming we'll have this draft online in the town, you know, on the town Correct. website. Yeah. Yes. I guess I'd vote for the 17th. And and obviously we, we need to work on some logistics here in terms of, and Ben, you and I have talked about this in terms of an appropriate meeting space. So there you need to check availability to to right. pin down that date. OK, uh, I can get that underway tomorrow, maybe. OK, I think we might meet just where we've been meeting in the Board of Ed building. Um, yeah. I, I don't know the exact number of chairs it can hold, but I think for the presentation, that should be fine. OK. Lynn and Fred, do you have any thoughts about that? No, I think that's probably good. But for I know they're closed for renovations and we may not be able to get in. So um, <laughs> we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find out. OK, good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments, questions, thoughts regarding the schedule that We've discussed here. Yeah, so Francisco, what's the date that the article will be published in the paper? Well, 
Uh, I don't. Okay. I don't know yet. Um, we but we do want to send out the press release. Uh, I would say at least two weeks in advance of the July 26th date. So okay. middle of the week of the 10th. Yeah, or the beginning of that week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. July. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if I may make a suggestion, we use the there's another another local paper over the border in Westerly called the Westerly Sun, but a lot of people in Pawkatuck read it. Ah, uh, um, okay. As well as the New London Day, which is the larger, I believe, the larger circulation for Stonington. But I don't know. Okay. I'm sure. And would you uh, uh, would you also do a two week notice of the next presentation? I mean, make sure that we're again. Yeah, we want to hit it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Even even though the first press release announces both of them. Yeah, you you absolutely you want to send out kind of a reminder press release. That'd be great. Too often. And who does that? Um, who who's going to be responsible for that? We will prepare the press release and then we'll coordinate with um, whoever at the town staff uh, typically issues press releases and does notices. That's okay. Gail. Great. Gail, Gail Phoenix. Okay. And hopefully she'll be back from vacation by then. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. Great time. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Nope. OK. So let, let's talk about phase two. Um, so in phase two, we, we will do a lot, a lot more outreach. Um, we're, we'll have we'll produce more by way of communications materials, uh, whether it be flyers uh, for download, uh, hard copy flyers. Um, um, you know, basics on what what the update is about, opportunities to participate, et cetera. Uh, we plan on conducting an online survey. Um, and we will do that in advance of any workshops because we'll we'll use the survey to generate interest in participating in something in person. Uh, we will conduct focus group format workshops, basically meaning we'll we'll we're expecting now, and we could we could revise our format as needed, but I think we're expecting to conduct workshops on on issues and topics rather than specific districts or geographies. Uh, although, it, if we need to uh, amend that to focus on Pocketuck or or Mystic, you know, whatever we need to do, we we could uh, design a workshop specific to one of those geographies. Uh, other than that, we had planned on doing a workshop on to address, you know, residential zones, by example, uh, parking or signage if we needed to, coastal zone issues. Uh, so that, and we anticipate doing a lot of that work in, through the fall. Um, and then we'll go into a period very similar to the, to the work that we've done over the past year, where uh, there's a lot of work that we do as a body together to make decisions on on how to to handle the rewrite and, and any revisions needed. Um, and then, and again, at the end of that process, go through a similar process that we, we just discussed for phase one with respect to public presentations and hearings. Now the Topics we plan on covering in far more depth than we've covered in phase one include taking a look at allowed uses in your zones um, and the permit requirements. So we'll we'll go through the list again. I know we've done this once already, but we'll really go through it. Um, this time with a little more input from the community and, and with an eye towards making more substantial changes if needed and as appropriate. You know, which uses are allowed in what districts, uh, the type of permit that you require, do we need so many special use permits, et cetera. Um, we'll take a look at your bulk area and height regulations. Uh, do they need to be more restrictive, more permissive? Is it, are there just 
specific districts that could be more restrictive or permissive, and that, that's the type of review we we intend. We'll take a look at your residential zones, any changes that might be needed there. Um, your parking regulations, are, are your parking requirements appropriate to the development and to the demand? Um, we, we know that the Pocketuck has got its special parking overlay because the parking requirements are um, really uh, too high of a standard for that particular village. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look, look at those across the town. We have a lot of work to do with respect to sign regulations. We need to move towards what's called a content neutral based approach to your sign regulations. And that is based upon case law. Um, which basically means you're agnostic to what is written on the sign and the purpose of the sign, and you're strictly concerned with the, the format, structure, the construction, the, the size, the location, the lighting, et cetera, of the sign. Your, your regs aren't too bad in this area, but there's work to be done. Uh, we'll take a look at your commercial, industrial, mixed use zoning and, and design guidelines for those areas. Um, and then uh, all of the environmental regulations that overlap with your zoning, whether it be wetlands, aquifer protection, uh, issues related to your MS4 permit, your floodplain regulations and, and coastal, coastal zone management and resilience issues. And, and that's, that's going to be a big piece of work right there. And we'll, uh, we're really going to need to engage with uh, a lot of different people and, and um, various entities on that. And then finally, if needed, we'll, we'll update the zoning map to reflect any changes that are made to districts or boundaries. Okay. A lot of work. Where's, where's short term rentals in there, Francisco? They're there. Oh, it, it's <laughs> <laughs> residential zoning, residential zoning review. Yeah. Okay. Uh, allowed uses and permit requirements. It's in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There, there are plenty of thorny issues that are yeah. buried um, inside I, these, could, these topics. Could, could I'd like to excuse me for a minute, Fred. Just jumping back when you say you want to do an online survey, how do you get your email list mm. for that? We, so we are going to distribute that in every way possible. <laughs> Leaflets right. falling from the sky. Yes. So that comes back to a press release to try to get some press attention on the town webpage. We'll provide a link there. Okay, we'll great. try to get it distributed through as many email listservs as we can. Anything that the town has in place, uh, social media. It could be okay. incredibly effective, and in some cases, we do Facebook ads, um, and that's been really effective in getting people's attention and, and increasing participation rates. There's something um, that a lot of people use in town uh, called the Stonington Forum, which I think is a Facebook. Okay. I, I don't, I don't look at it, so I don't know how okay. you get there, but uh, I know it's quite popular. Yeah, it's good to know. Okay. Uh, I wonder if, um, so I have, I have a couple questions here. So who, the survey, for, are, are you designing the survey, Francesco? Correct. And what yes. is, what is the purpose? What, what do you plan on doing with the results? Sure. So let, let me, let me first preface this by saying it, it's not what's technically, it won't be what's technically called a statistically valid survey. Um, a statistically valid survey is typically conducted by phone where you identified a cross section of demographic across the town. You target that demographic and you, you're reaching out. You're getting participation from uh, representative uh, across various demographics in the town. This is an open survey and it's it's one touch point. It, it's one piece of information that gives us an idea as to what people's big concerns are, and it can be incredibly valuable in guiding us. That being said, we're, we aren't going to make any just policy decisions. We're, we aren't going to make any change to the regulations based upon responses to a survey question alone. It, it, it's really, it affords us an opportunity to engage people 
uh, to generate interest, to drive participation to workshops, and, and, and provides us a very clear idea of what people's real concerns are. And, and that is accomplished through both questions that we design that are multiple choice questions and through open-ended questions where people actually enter responses, sometimes a sentence, sometimes a paragraph or two. And um, we find them incredibly valuable. So that, that's the purpose and, and that, that's kind of how they work. Um, question, uh, Francisco. Um, yeah. Those of us who've been doing this for a while probably have a laundry list of things we'd like to see addressed. Um, best to wait until we get to the appropriate topic, or do we just throw them all in a hat right now and 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 take them as they come up? Good question. I I think. Once we get in September, once right, once we get through this process, I really think we need to open it up in one of our initial conversations and and just have a very long discussion about where we think the real needs are okay. with respect to this next round. And just if it, we spend two hours just having a back and forth conversation about where the real work needs to be done. Um, you know where where the regulations fall short of uh, of managing growth and development, and maybe where they're overly restrictive and preventing good things from happening. I'd, I'd like to have that big picture discussion and you know point us point us in the right direction. Ultimately, I've, we've got a big list here, and I, I think to some degree. We, we may have to choose some of our battles. I, we may just have to agree that some things, while we see potential, that maybe they won't get traction with the community and it, it's just not worth pursuing. Um, what, the whole reason we broke this up into two phases is because we know that this second phase is gonna be very difficult. And there, there may be changes that we wanna make that are are, will generate some opposition. And right. And, sure. and so phase one is intended to for us to get a solid foundation under us to have a very strong fallback position. And it, if, if phase two really gets stymied for, you know, hot any any thorny hot button controversial issues, um, we we are standing on much firmer ground with with the the phase one regulations having been adopted. So um, a couple things. Um, we, <laughs> so you know I I've done a lot of work with survey and survey development. Um, mm -hmm. When you post the survey, are you are you going to uh, in some way communicate how the results of the survey will be viewed in the process um, and uh, posted? Are, or yeah. are you going to just say, so for example, let's say I'm just making it up. Um, mm -hmm. You get a survey and, and there's a lot of uh, interest in short-term rentals. Sure. Are we then going to say, well, we're going to make sure that we have a public forum that just addresses um, short-term rentals. Like, are we going to say we're going to take the top three things or four things or ten things and make sure that we have a published agenda and with calendar as to this is when the public meeting will be held and this these are the topics that will be uh, discussed during that public meeting, and the and that's how we are building our public meeting um, agenda is partly based on the results of this survey. Y yes, I, I I think that's that's how we need to do it because as as we head into the fall, the the survey is i think will afford us our first opportunity to understand what people are most concerned about 
And I yeah. do think that our the workshops we conduct need to be responsive to that. And okay. so we can use the survey to promote the workshops in general. And we we may even identify certain dates that we're holding for them that we're committing, right? We're holding the room, the facility, but it may be that we have yet to identify the specific topics of all of those workshops because we're waiting for that feedback to come in through the survey. So I think we, right. we need to, th right, exactly. So I think right. we need like to that's, be very, but that, yeah. that's the purpose of the survey. So that should be said. And then yes, at, based on the results, we'll move forward in that manner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you're so exactly the, right. Yeah. So there should be questions on all of the topics, the hot topics yes. that you just kind of um, listed before. Okay. We're, we're going to cover all of the ground, everything that we could possibly anticipate. And mm -hmm. we'll have lots of open-ended choices and opportunities so that if we didn't cover something, people will be able to tell us what we should be paying attention to. Okay. Okay. All right. right. Great. And then my other comment is in phase two in general. I think when we have public discussions, there's a lot of prep, prep work associated with that because people come and they think they understand the topic, right? Mm -hmm. um, perhaps they've done a little homework on their own, perhaps not. Perhaps it's just what a neighbor said in their ear. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's going to be really important for the commission to understand that, you know, there there are going to have to be some, there's going to be some prep work to just to have an understanding of this is where we're stand now. This is how it relates to all the zones. This is what this actually means, et cetera, et cetera. Is that, is that kind of your vision? Yeah, these these are going. We expect these to be pretty intensive working sessions. Um, so, uh, let you know, let's use uh, housing or, or uh, residential zoning as an example. If we're going to conduct uh, a workshop specific to the residential zones, we we first need to conduct a presentation, maybe half hour of the workshop, first walking through a basic primer on zoning. Right. This is what it is. This is how it works. This is the town's authority. This is the planning and zoning commission's role and responsibility. This is what the zoning currently allows in these districts with respect to uses and density, et cetera. We need to spend a half an hour on a primer. And then we need to discuss these are some of the issues that we are currently aware of with respect to the current zoning. Right. These are some of the needs that we potentially see that we would like to talk about this evening. And we're interested in hearing from you on what your concerns are about the zoning regulations for residential districts. Uh, typically, depending on the size of the crowd, we will go to breakout sessions so that we can get no more than 10 people around a table and have one conversation and document. And we will we'll take an hour or more to go through that process. And then report back uh, at the end of the night, all the tables will report back. And that, that's a typical format. We do have a decent amount of flexibility with how we structure it. But that's uh, the type of format we're anticipating might be most productive for these sessions. Great, great. Francisco, just a heads up. Yeah. I've noticed in my short time going to some of these meetings and dating back to when Jason Vince was leading some mm -hmm. breakout sessions seem to be uh, uh, citizens of Stonington almost are allergic to them. I don't know what it is. How, and, how so? And, and maybe it's the facilitator. Because um, I noticed when I went to a couple of Jason Vincent, our previous town planner, yeah. he was able to engage the public and make them go into breakout tables. Not make them, but certainly encourage. Hey, you, why without you walking out the table? back door, without yeah. slipping out the back door, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. And then, but I noticed, at least in the short-term rental uh, breakout session and another public hearing, people were just kind of hesitant to engage. Yeah. So all I'm saying, you as the facilitator are going to have to work your magic words to get them 
to uh, if they want to participate, you got to get in a great breakout group. So I, I I'm fortunate enough to to be in an office full of people that do this professionally <laughs> and uh, on oh, yeah. lots of different different right. types of projects and lots of different topics. And we have a lot of community engagement specialists that Great. It's, Great. it's their job to get people talking and keep the conversations productive and get the shy people to talk and the people that won't be quiet to be quiet a little bit. And uh, oh, so you, to, have some, you work the room with a bunch, not just by yourself. You have a. Uh, uh, yeah, well, we oh. would have a, a team of oh. people there so that oh, we, right. we okay. have. Yeah, so that those are productive sessions. Great. And then we document it all. Uh, we Great. right. We have flip charts. We write it all down. Uh, we take pictures of those charts. We we transcribe it into the record, and we start building a record. Great. Well, yeah. I had a feeling you you guys must be well well seasoned and polished yeah. in this. But just a heads up, yeah. you might have to bring your A A team. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and and that it's going to vary a lot based upon the topic, uh, too. Absolutely. I think. Yeah. 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 The the communications regarding this work is incredibly important. Absolutely. And and I I think we really need to be very intentional about it. Make it clear to to people that we're welcoming their participation. We want them to be part of this process, and that we are we're we are there to listen. And the work is really, truly just beginning, and that that sure. communication needs to happen as as even as we're moving into uh, any public hearing for adoption for phase one. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Our next meeting, as I mentioned before, uh, being the fourth Wednesday of the month, is would be Wednesday, June 28th uh, at 7 p.m. And um, once again, we'll distribute likely a Teams link um, uh, un unless uh, Clifton uh, gets uh, things back off the ground with uh, the, the service that the town had been using. <laughs> And Clifton, your predecessor had, I think it was, I forget it was GoToMeeting or Zoom or whatever it had set up. And then after he left, uh, we I kind of took over the teams, uh, which I think is working for most people. Lynn's struggling to get on, but. Um, it, it was WebEx uh, before. Yeah, WebEx. you know, I can't, I can't get that Teams on any of my devices. I don't yeah, understand I'm, what's going on. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It's not working for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay. I'll figure it out. Yeah, and I, I, we've got a month to coordinate with Clifton, so maybe we could migrate back to a town platform. But either way, we'll we'll once again be meeting virtually in a month. Great. Okay. All right. Well, that that concludes our meeting. Um, th thank you, everyone. We're under an hour. It's a record for us. It <laughs> is. So any you don't really foresee any real homework. For next month either you'll be no uh, sit tight we uh ben ben and i will work to um try to get some comment out of the boards that we we've, we've shared the regs with we'll we'll keep you all informed of our progress and hopefully we'll have some um some feedback to discuss at our, at our meeting next month right okay and i'll work with Clifton on those comments yep yeah, and while things are going to be a little quiet here over the next couple of months, we, you know, we we can start gearing up towards phase two. So, by example, um, I could start working on we we can start working on the survey, right? And 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 have a chance for all of you to review that uh, this summer. That's and so idea. we could we could hit the ground running with that and right away in September. Sure. Um, and, and so there, there's work we could we could keep doing and keep things moving along. OK. All right. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, I guess we need. Well, it's, there's only three of us on the board anyway. <laughs> need motion a request to adjourn. To the meeting. Yeah, Chairman? I guess that's what I'm trying to say, Fred. Motion to adjourn. Second. There we go. All those in favor. All right. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, Good night. Thank you.
Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.